Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about some big storms brewing with the monsoon continuing to remain active, as well as the wildfires with the smoke and the Saharan dust. So if you do like weather-edited content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is July 22nd. If you can do me a favor, go ahead and follow me. I'm all, I'm actually on Instagram as well as Twitter. I'll be doing uh, more updates on those platforms as well, kind of throughout the day when I'm not doing a video. So you can get timely updates as the weather changes uh, throughout the day. So definitely, I'll leave the uh, links in the description below so you can make it easy on yourself to uh, click on those links and go ahead and follow me on those platforms as well. So, but let's get right to it. There's a couple features that stand out this morning. We've got this little X. Uh, this is what they call a broad surface low off an old frontal boundary here that came through. That's gonna be moving out in the open waters of the Southeast Gulf. The steering currents are really light here, so it's not going to be going anywhere uh, in a short amount of time. But the National Hurricane Center uh, does highlight a 30% chance of something possibly coming, uh, something tropical out of this feature. There's also that cold front that came through yesterday. Look at that. There's a lot of dry air back behind that front. 55 this morning in New York. But yesterday, in north of Philly and places in Jersey, they dealt with a lot of that severe weather with hail and some of those higher wind gusts of over 60 miles an hour. But it's clear today. So on the back side of that, you got a lot of dry air. So it's going to be a nice day for them. Uh, but we also have another uh, feature up here in uh, northern Canada getting into uh, Minneapolis. Uh, that's going to be setting the stage for our uh, what will be, looks like, some severe weather which I think is actually going to be uh, fishtailing down to the southeast as we go through the weekend and setting the stage for some bigger storms, uh, possibly, as the continued uh, monsoon remains active for them and especially uh, starts getting uh, really intense as we go through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, for, uh, for the Four Corners region. So let's take a look at the big picture. So what's happening out here in the Atlantic, a lot of the Saharan dust is just kind of squashing a lot of the activity right now. Uh, but there's it, it continues to remain active off the African coast. It's just it's not a, a very favorable phase for tropical storm development out here in the MDR region. But there's this region down here by Panama. They actually had a, a an earthquake uh, just south of Panama yesterday. First, they had it 7.0, but I think they downgraded it to a 6.8 uh, earthquake but man there's a lot of thunderstorm action uh in and around the uh, panama and costa rica that's actually going to be fishtailing into uh, the eastern pacific side and you can see this conveyor belt of moisture that's the keeping the monsoon alive and that this feature right here will continue to move over into the pacific side and probably actually form into a tropical entity and that will actually help feed uh, the monsoon and continue the monsoon uh, to remain active for that region. So here's the overall hazard map today. You can definitely see we have a noticeable shift uh, in the overall pattern. Uh, we're, we're getting that, that ridge of high pressure is away from the coastal regions. They're experiencing some really nice weather. A lot of the ridge of high pressure is going to be dominating over Idaho and Montana. That will slowly shift into uh, places in the Dakotas and then sink southward as we go uh, throughout the week into the weekend over the Central Plains. As here's the flash flood watches over uh, Arizona and New Mexico this morning will only uh, stay with them for the, uh, for the next several days at least. So let's take a look at the uh, latest uh, high resolution uh, R model today. Over the next uh, 17 hours, I like to use this feature because it, it encompasses all 18 hours of the short range model. And we've got that right along that boundary where that cold front lies down to the south. There's still a lot of instability along the coastal regions. They've been inundated with some very heavy rain in the last 30 days. Some of these spots have actually picked up close to 50 inches of rain along the coast. I mean, they've had you know, 30, 40, 50 inches of rain the last 90 days since essentially April from this region. And they're going to be 
impacted again today on the coastal coastal regions down here in the far south side and then where that uh instability is where that little surface low there's florida is going to be heating up in the action with uh, some a lot of the a lot of the rain uh moving in from them but it, it still remains active for uh the four corners regions into the monsoon and but what's noticeable it's going to be further north than what it typically has been so now places in uh, durango and even further north are going to be impacted from the monsoon into uh, utah as well and some of that precipitation will try to spread northward but a lot of this is dry lightning and won't be able to reach the surface because the mid latitudes are so dry in that region because they've been so hot as of late but yeah the wildfires have continued to remain uh, an issue you can see here's the what what here's the uh, smoke that a lot of a lot of them uh, are going to be impacted continuing to be impacted for a good chunk of the country as it, uh, this smokes these wildfires have been happening for an extended period of time now and it just gets caught up in the jet stream and in the wind pattern and de you know depending on where the upper level winds are it could filter down in your region so yeah places in texas have poor air quality now uh places in uh you know the the ohio valley it was the northeast now that's kind of a fish tailed off and moved off the coastline here but you're still going to be dealing with that uh a, a dust uh, for that uh, smoke for the foreseeable future because those fires are still going to probably take uh you know several weeks uh, to possibly put out if not longer because it, it, the change the, the conditions aren't really going to be changing that much in that type of environment as we go into the dust on this on the opposite side we're still dealing with that sahara dust that's usually pretty prevalent this time of year in uh, june and july and we're still getting those waves of dust that come in from off the african coast through the caribbean and and by the time uh, saturday rolls around into the weekend these places in deep south texas uh actually probably filtering into north texas getting into saturday afternoon into sunday with some of that uh so just that saharan dust that's going to be going to be in and around and you and you can feel it you can see the haze out in the uh, especially when you get up in the uh, upper upper uh, levels especially in, like in the downtown areas you can definitely see where the haze is really uh, noticeable but the main setup we're going to be talking about is up here, uh, up here in Canada. They're going to be starting off on uh, tomorrow, Friday. There's going to be a, a, a boundary that's going to be setting up along this area into uh, parts of the Dakotas and parts of uh, Minnesota. The Cape values are pretty high um, already, and there are going to be taking advantage of this boundary. And you notice this little hole, this white. This is that ridge that's going to be starting to develop over the central plains. And this is just going to uh, kind of expand over time as we go through the weekend and especially uh, next week. But right along that boundary, you're going to have to be dealing with some severe weather. So on the day Friday, uh, we're going to be looking at some a slight risk for severe weather. These do, do does include some damaging winds and some large hail with these in places like Bismarck, uh, getting into much of North Dakota and to northern interiors of uh, Minnesota as well, as the monsoon will continue to remain active. Like I mentioned, look how far north it goes with that uh, heavier rainfall potentially spreading all the way up to possibly Denver now with some of that, uh, that monsoon flow will continue to move further north but right along this boundary, this is the setup that I'm concerned about as we go through the weekend. You can definitely see this boundary. And like I mentioned, here's the ridge that's going to be building over the central U.S. I think a lot of the storm development is going to be tra traversing southeast along this boundary. And these start just the ridge itself could actually amplify this particular system and kind of feed feed the heat in the mid latitudes, which a lot of the modeling is not showing up yet. But I think a lot of this, these are going to be some big storms we're going to have to be contending with as this will be diving southeast through, you know, getting court towards the Ohio Valley as we go through deep into the weekend. So let me show you what, what we have so far. This is what the outlook looks like on Saturday. It doesn't have much of that severe threat as of yet, but I do feel a lot of the, some of the other data that I'm looking at, I'll show you here in a little bit has a, a pretty good severe weather outbreak potentially happening 
uh, for in, in this area as we as we dive into the weekend. So what I'm looking at here, this is the official outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. Now, of course, this is three days from now. This is, uh, you know, they only have a marginal risk for severe weather setting up in places like Chicago and Detroit and Milwaukee and Madison and Grand Rapids, Michigan. So and they have just a, a even a less of a risk extending down into uh, the Ohio Valley. I mean, uh, Idaho. Iowa getting into portions of the Ohio Valley as well and uh, Wisconsin but I think this is actually going to be a lot more intense than what it's showing uh, at the moment here's the latest uh, uh, experimental model of the GFS model and it's actually showing a little bit uh, more intensity this is not an official guidance from the storm the storm prediction center so don't take these 15 percent or 45 percent verbatim the same calculations to them I'm just thinking the placement of this severe weather is going to be a little bit more intense and more more expansive than, than what it's showing right now. So I do feel the Storm Prediction Center is going to be ramping up their intensity levels on this particular setup as we go through uh, the weekend. So I'm, I'm getting more concerned in places in southern Minnesota, getting into especially Iowa, getting into Wisconsin, some bigger storms. And then the northern interior of uh, Missouri could be looking at some bigger storms. Uh, Illinois as well as the northern fringes of Indiana as well. And I do feel as we go uh, through on the day on with your setup for the ridge this is how it's probably going to play out so there's a setup for saturday there we got the ridge that that's going to be building over the central plains and you see this kind of troughiness i showed you the boundary you can almost depict it with this little white line here uh i think these i think these storms are going to be fish channeling along this boundary of this area so i do feel this area it will be impacted on saturday and this will continue uh, to fishtail down to the southeast and be going to be impacting much of the Ohio Valley on a Sunday. So here's the setup from that experimental model of the GFS model uh, coming up on Sunday. And it has some pretty big storms and a pretty an expansive area as well in parts of the Ohio Valley, especially into Illinois, uh, Indiana, and Ohio. I do feel Ohio getting into parts of Pennsylvania as well could be seeing some bigger, stronger storms by the time we get into Sunday. Like I mentioned, this is Thursday, so we got plenty of time uh, to look at this particular system. I'm just kind of showing you at the moment right now, I, I'm getting a little bit more concerned about some of the experimental data that we're kind of looking at uh, ahead of time are, are showing a lot of features are a lot more intense uh, than, than what uh, some of the modeling is picking up. So I, I, I'm, get, I'm definitely getting more concerned with this system as uh, I think the ridge will be just feeding this, uh, we'll, be, we'll be seeing some triple digit heat here. And I think that's gonna feed uh, this system with a lot of the, and fuel, kind of fuel these thunderstorms. But as we go into Monday, uh, yeah, there's that same system. We'll continue to move off to the Southeast. Now I think the setup is gonna be over much of the Northeast. That'll continue to uh, fishtail off down to the Southeast. We'll be starting to impact uh, Kentucky now, uh, West Virginia, or portions of uh, Pennsylvania, as this will continue to slide away from the ridge. So it's not going to be into Kansas. It's not going to be in Nebraska, Kansas, into Oklahoma, or into Texas. It's going to be in that uh, outer fringes of that ridge, uh, then further northeast, as whatever might develop from that tropical low by that point uh, from this system as well. Does it go actually into Florida or does it actually fishtail into uh, North Carolina? The steering currents are very light with this particular system. So right now it's over land. So it still has to get over water to figure out where it might go, especially with the steering currents, but it's not gonna be going anywhere uh, any anytime soon. So here's the setup for your rain prospects. Like I mentioned, the continued monsoon remains active for the foreseeable future especially gets active friday saturday and sunday with some dangerous flash flooding in those areas those areas have little to no warning with you know a half inch or an inch rainfall i know parts of uh, colorado had yesterday just had you know an inch and out an inch and an hour causes huge issues in this area so this is this is a definitely a dangerous setup as we heat up in the afternoon and you have these torrential rains fall all at once 
and then you have that a flash flooding just elevate within within minutes it can be turning dangerous in these areas so definitely be on a lookout for that uh, over especially as we go into the weekend but man i do feel you know storms are going to be pretty active over this area of the country uh for the next uh, four four or five days as we go uh into the weekend and then and going into monday as well and that will eventually uh, go off the coast and we'll see have to see what's going to come to fruition from this little low pressure off uh off the southeast coast as well so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching i do like this video and definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm